Welcome to Finance and Public Education, week eight. We're cruising through this class. So a couple different things. Uh, we have uh, chapter six and some other pages to read in our textbook. And then also this week I've included uh, the budget mill report. And this isn't anything you need to even discuss, but just be aware of and understand these different components. And so uh, this is something that is given out to uh, community members, uh, taxpayers, of course, board members, so we can see what the trend is on how many mills we're levying for each one of our main um, budgetary components and also how it affects uh, a $100,000 house or a $200,000 house. Districts right now throughout the state are doing uh, the same thing of how much they're going to increase permissive levies. And maybe you, some of you have done that in your articles for transportation, transportation, uh, adult education, building reserve, and tuition. They have to post right now how much they are considering increasing that. So this is something that is good to use in August when boards are reviewing the budgets so they can see the trend um, either up or down or making sure that it stays pretty steady. And then for taxpayers too, as you can see in a $100,000 house with the amount that this board is considering um, increasing uh, taxes, um, actually decreasing taxes by $113. So it's actually gone down. Um, same with the $200,000. So uh, something that is that is good and good to use and, and use, uh, put it in a file and, and when you need to use it, you can or, or understand how it works and, and uh, utilize that how you need to. Also, uh, going back here, uh, we'll be having in the discussion forum three different areas to focus on. The final budget project, and we're getting close to being done with this Excel sheet, uh, uh, which is exciting because it's uh, taken you a lot of work and there's been a lot of great work out there. So you're going to be posting your retirement fund uh, for your expenditure budget. So if you go into your retirement tab, 114, this is pretty straightforward, pretty simple. This is a permissive levy and districts um, tend to levy a little bit extra every year because they don't want to go in the hole here. Um, and it's based upon the amount of what a, a mill costs for the entire county and the county actually covers all these different funds. So it uh, the effect on your district taxpayers is a little bit less. So what basically what you do is you have the amount of, uh, of how much you pay your, your teachers, uh, high school, elementary, whichever fund you're working on. This elementary is 114. If it was high school, it'd be 214. So you have your amount that you pay your, your elementary teachers times it by 6.2 and you get this number for your, uh, let's see, business services, however much they make times it by 6.2 and you get this number. And now the, the this um, item right here, this this uh, this this column is totaled up in this object breakout. So everything underneath two two ten is added up into this area. I think there was some confusion there in the general fund as we were doing that. Now the same goes for Medicare. Same goes for TRS. Same goes for PERS. Um, same goes for unemployment. Uh, so Medicare, everything that the teachers make that you have in your general fund gets tabulated times that by 1.45. That number goes right there. Uh, TRS, same thing just for teachers. Everything that teachers make times it by 8.97 and that number goes right there. And you do that throughout instructional. Um, uh, you do that throughout uh, for PERS. Um, the same thing here for your classified staff, unemployment contribution, same thing, not very much of a percentage, but something that has to be budgeted for. So again, like I said, usually districts will, will levy a little bit extra to cover any, any uh, additional costs because people are usually coming and going, staff members, especially classified staff. So it's always good to have a little bit of a contingency there. Also, in the discussion forum, discuss effective methods in building the school budget that you will utilize in your school district. That's directly from the reading. Also, another good discussion question um, is the 
funding system between districts in Montana truly equalized. And we've kind of, you've, you've done a great job really focusing on that. Um, and so uh, some of that may be redundant. Uh, some of it may be just a little bit further of a discussion as you have learned a little bit more about school finance. And then also from your uh, article critiques, which have been uh, truly, truly outstanding. They've been, they've been really good. They've been um, uh, very interesting to read, especially with this legislative session. So Again, uh, there will be office hours this coming Wednesday. I think some of you are probably going to be on spring break. Um, but if you do have any questions, shoot me an email. Or if you want to meet separately, that's not a problem either. I'd be happy to do a video conference with you and discuss any questions or, or problems that you may be having on your, um, your budget here. And we're getting close to wrapping up the class. So... Make sure, I put a note in the announcements, make sure that you're completing all the different components of this final project. Uh, the one good thing about this class that I really like is you're building this final project throughout the whole semester. But as you do it every week, I'd suggest that you go back and you polish up some of the items that you discussed or that you had an assignment on that you got uh, some comments from or you got graded. So also, uh, some of you probably are not completely done with your general fund again please let me know if you have any questions it is it is complex it is uh detailed uh try to make it a, we try to make it as simple as possible to understand but still until you get into it and you start working through it it can be kind of confusing so again shoot me an email um or give me a call and i'd be happy to help thanks and good luck